Metaphor re Fantasio. Weird name, I know, but you should definitely be interested in hearing more about it. Metaphor is a brand new IP from JRPG giants Atlas, and developed by a new in-house studio called Studio Zero. But why should you be interested in a new Atlas IP? Well that's because Studio Zero was actually formed by legendary game director Katsura Hashino of SMT3, Persona 3, 4 and 5 Acclaim. And this is his new game. Metaphor is rooted more in the fantasy genre, which is really cool by the way, and is far different from the modern setting of Persona, but from what I've seen so far, it looks to be one of the best games of 2024, and an instant classic. So in today's video, I'll be telling you everything you need to know about Metaphor re -Fantasia. Before we dive into what you need to know about Metaphor re Fantasio, there will be timestamps in the description to help with navigation, and if you enjoyed the video or want to see more Metaphor, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more. I am making this video in preparation for the showcase that is happening in 2 days time, so I'm super excited about that and I want you guys to be excited as well, which is why I'm making this video. So if there's anything else you want me to cover, definitely leave a comment down below as well. So Ketsuro Hashino isn't the only one who is working on this game. He is teaming up once again with character designer Shigenori Sojima and composer Shoji Meguro for the project. Both of the which credits include Persona 3, 4, 5 and SMT 3 Nocturne as well. In fact, they have also got Koda Kazuma of Nier Automata fame and Ikuto Yamashita of Neon Genesis Evangelion fame as the game's concept artists. This is an all-star dev team which is why the game already looks so good and they've only shown limited gameplay. There is an event happening next Tuesday the 23rd of April where they'll be showcasing more of the game. So definitely subscribe to watch my breakdown of the show. Metaphor re Fantasio takes place in a fantasy world with differing tribes, creatures and of course magic. So your typical fantasy genre which is pretty cool. Our story unfolds in the United Kingdom of Eucronia where the assassination of the king sparks chaos and turmoil throughout the lands. Amidst this unrest, a mysterious magic known only to the king called the Royal Magic is unleashed, plunging the world into a royal tournament to claim the throne. In the midst of these tumultuous events, our protagonist, accompanied by their fairy companion Galika, is tasked with breaking the curse that has befallen the prince, believed to be deceased by the kingdom. To unravel this mystery, they embark on a perilous journey across the expansive kingdom. Their quest leads them to realize that to succeed, they must navigate the treacherous waters of the throne tournament forging alliances with allies from diverse tribes scattered across the realm. As they embark on this epic endeavor, they will encounter challenges, make new friends, and ultimately seek to restore peace to Eucronia. So it's time to face your fears and take your throne. And by the way, that's the game's like subtext as well, it's face your fears, take your throne, and it's it's sick. It's It just gets me really hyped. <laughs> Metaphor introduces a new protagonist of the game, this guy. He has two different coloured eyes, blue hair like Makoto Yuki, and a dripped outfit. Joined by the fairy Galika, who is the mascot familiar type character, our protagonist sets forth on the quest to break the deadly curse afflicting his childhood friend, the Prince of Eucronia. As a member of the Elder Tribe, our protagonist faces prejudice and discrimination due to the state religion's belief that their people possess dangerous and heretical magic. Branded as tainted by society, the Elder are rare among the populace and endure widespread contempt and persecution throughout the kingdom. So just like any other good JRPG, you'll meet a variety of characters, some of whom will join your party. Stroll is a young man from the Klemma tribe, encountered by the protagonist at the recruitment center for the state army. Despite hailing from a noble family, he displays a remarkable sense of justice and intelligence. However, his decision to enlist in the army alongside commoners raises questions about his circumstances as it is uncommon for nobles to pursue such paths. Holkenberg, a knight hailing from the Rosante tribe, and a former member of the royal family's Kingsguard, she once served faithfully by the prince's side. Despite her youth, she displayed exceptional skill in wielding various weapons, earning her a place in the prince's personal guard. However, when the prince fell under attack, she was unable to protect him, burdening her heart with the weight of failure. In the aftermath, she set out on a journey of self-imposed exile, carrying the stigma of her perceived inadequacy with her wherever she roamed. Hayes May, a former knight of the Yujif tribe, he has an acute perception compared to most others, due in part to the Yujif trait of being sensitive to sound. With an appearance that differs greatly from other tribes, it's not uncommon for Yujifs to be discriminated against, and it seems Hayes May is no exception. He's passed his own burn to bear. So these are only the characters that have been announced so far, and we're still not sure if there'll be more party members along the way. 
so I'm really hoping we find out more on April 23rd. So now we're getting into the good stuff, the gameplay. What is a good JRPG without good combat and gameplay systems? Well, from their creator's voice sit-down presentation, Hashino, Sojima, and Magura-san revealed a lot more. Hashino explains, in the world of Metaphor re Fantasio, society has grown dependent on magical tools to cast spells. As the previous king passes away, players step into the story as one of the several candidates vying for the throne in an election to determine the next ruler. Throughout the protagonist's journey to ascend the throne, they encounter individuals capable of transforming their bodies into archetypes. Hashino clarifies that archetypes are not innate traits in this game, rather individuals undergo a personal awakening through interactions with others and by drawing inspiration from their actions. So archetypes are basically just like personas, in a sense. Rather than recruiting and swapping between personas, the game emphasizes strengthening relationships and drawing inspiration from them to awaken traits within the player character, which manifests as archetypes. This innovative approach adds depth to character development and progression, encouraging players to forge meaningful connections throughout their journey. So basically what this says to me is that instead of just going into the world or into dungeons and recruiting personas and fusing them, basically you need to form bonds with certain characters in order to go gain certain archetypes, which I do think is a really neat system to work with. Metaphor Re Fantasio adopts the aggressive stylization seen in the series post Persona 5, evident in its battle UI and menu design. I mean, seriously, just look at it. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Like, I know a lot of people are kind of sick of the menu being on top of the character and then, you know, turn-based stuff, but I think it looks great. I just, the UI looks stunning. Once again, Atlas's UI department, props to you. Hats off. This turn-based RPG emphasizes exploiting elemental weaknesses, harnessing power from archetypes, and summoning them into battle. However, the game introduces intriguing new concepts in combat, relationships, and maneuverability. In addition to traditional turn-based combat, referred to as command battles, players can assess opponents on the field and eliminate them without engaging in full turn-based fights. To elaborate further, the combat blends both turn-based and real-time elements. Players have the freedom to actively navigate around enemies in real-time while attacking them, with the option to seamlessly transition into turn-based battles. I mean, look at this transition right here, like, it looks sick, like, seriously, you attack the enemy, it's like, oh, it's a bit too strong, and then bam, straight into a turn-based battle. This approach mirrors the fusion of turn-based and real-time combat, seen in games like Falcom's Kuro no Kiseki and Trails Through Daybreak. Furthermore, players have the flexibility to choose between finishing off enemies entirely through real-time combat or engaging in more intricate strategic battles in the turn-based mode. This dual approach to combat offers players the freedom to tailor their gameplay experience based on their preferences and the circumstances of each encounter. This streamlined combat system aims to simplify encounters with low-level enemies, yet differs from typical automated battles that skip fights entirely. I'm looking at you, Morgana Bus. Players always have the option to utilize this approach against opponents regardless of their strength. So it's pretty cool that it says regardless of their strength. So basically it means even high level enemies, um, depending on the, like, the, the action combat of the game, you can probably even beat them just purely based on that without even going to turn base. But it'll be interesting to see what happens because the turn base is where all the, all the cool stuff happens. So, you know, we'll see. Similar to Persona, Metaphor Re Fantasio will incorporate calendar and relationship simulation systems against the backdrop of an ongoing election that drives the plot forward. So yes, social links uh, or bonds in this game, as well as social stats are carried through from the games like Persona. While the specifics of the relationship system have not been fully detailed, the calendar will play a crucial role in the player's need to traverse the world, gathering votes and popularity as part of the royal tournament. This setup creates a tension akin to that found in the Persona series, where players must balance their relationships and obligations in the real world with their adventuring and dungeon crawling activities. However, unlike Persona, it appears that players will have the freedom to choose where they want to go and tackle plot developments non-linearly, which is really interesting because I do have a sneaking suspicion that this might sneak its way, or this system might sneak its way into Persona 6, but we'll see how Metaphor tackles the situation. Traveling the game will be facilitated by Gauntlet Runners, the peculiar walking vehicles showcased in various trailers. These vehicles serve as a hub for the party between towns. Additionally, players can expect more open-ended environments between locations, providing opportunities for exploration, grinding, and completing side quests. Whether on foot or skates, players can traverse these environments quickly and stylishly, taking the sights as they progress through the game. Also, I am going to touch a little bit about the music. So obviously Shoji Meguro has composed a lot of video games including the Persona series as well as SMT3 and Nocturne, all of which are kind of set during modern times, so it would be really really cool to see how he tackles the fantasy genre. 
From the little snippets that I've heard from the trailers, it sounds like that Magura-san is absolutely cooking in that new Studio Zero kitchen. Like seriously, I've been playing some of the background stuff um, when, I, when I've been talking and it just sounds amazing. So I'm really, really excited to see how this music plays into the world um, of Metaphor Refantasio. So that is everything you need to know so far about Metaphor Refantasio. The game comes out this year and we may even find out a release date in the coming days and it will be releasing on all major platforms. I'm definitely keen to check out the story of the game. I think the story premise is really cool considering that the main protagonist actually knows the Prince of Ukronia who has been assassinated. And I'm definitely keen to check out the hybrid gameplay, which is probably the, the one thing that I'm most looking forward to. But let me know in the comments below what you are most excited for. And if you'd like to know more about Metaphor Re Fantasio, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the kingdom of Ukronia.